welcome back to Sir's Call Brand Equity and I'm Sonali Krishna. Vinita Bari, the Managing Director of Britannia, is confident about the fact that the health and wellness trend is here to stay. So despite the health vertical giving very small returns, Britannia continues to make significant investments in this space. But is it justified or is it just a case of blind optimism? I caught up with a woman herself to ask her some of these pointed questions. Calories, carbs, cholesterol and fat. What can we ever deal with every day? And no, the FMCG sector isn't ignoring them either. And Britannia, the leader of the pack in health foods, is now entering the smart snacking category with Nutri-Choice Multigrain Sims and Nutri-Choice Multigrain Roast Tea, reinstating its commitment to the health and wellness space. Currently, Baked Biscuits account for a little over a percentage in the overall biscuit share and Baked Chips account for less than 1% in the overall chip size. Despite the numbers, Britannia is clearly pulling all stops to build this product vertical. The question, however, is, does it make sense to have such blind optimism in a category that is extremely niche, coupled with a very limited target group, and add to that the average Indian not being so health conscious? They don't look at it as small market share. They actually, as Nutrition see it as growing the market. We have uh, ambition in this space, which is about growing this brand into 500 crores, 1000 crores over a period of time. I don't see enough evidence that people want particularly healthy food. To push the argument that snack is going to be something that I think of in terms of health, I think it's a very, very far cry. If you're willing to wait for something in the region of 7 to 10 years to start making any serious money, then I think it's the right time. We launched Smarties around 2 to 3 years back with the assumption that uh, the health segment is growing. But uh, there we actually were not able to deliver on taste. So because of their combination, I think um, Indian Pecos. They will also face, face a similar challenge because they are launching again in the snacking segment or health products. They are also, I think, they will face the same challenge of balancing taste with food. Don't you think the inherent challenge, not only for you, but for all players who are dabbling in this space, mm -hmm. is the fact that while, you know, you will see mammoth growth, uh, on the flip side, you will have only so much of room to play with simply because your your CG is so limited and so narrow. That is if you look at today's target audience. Um, I think the whole idea of bringing in choices like this is actually to say to people that, you know, you don't have to either binge or go on a strict diet. There is a way of moderation where you can enjoy what you're doing every day and it's not without reason. So let's take NutriChoice as a brand. It was a very, very small brand. You know, today NutriChoice is a very significant part of our portfolio. In fact, it became our seventh power brand. Sure. So if I look at everything under NutriChoice, and three years ago, you know, this brand was tiny. It, all it consisted was a thin arrow root biscuit. I mean, it's very hard to resist something which is, you know, tasty and full of, uh, you know, fat and oil and so on. I mean, we all love to have our parathas in the morning. Isn't that inherently also our culture? It is, but what we have to recognize is that that culture is shifting. You know, there are people who are more concerned. I mean, you pick up the newspaper and you say, okay, there are 50 million uh, Indians diagnosed with diabetes today, uh, you know, that are, that are, sort of been seen to be prone to diabetes with a number likely to increase to 75 million. Uh, tell me, why is it that, you know, Britannia is so optimistic in this space and the others who also look at this as a great opportunity have retracted? You know, frankly, you have to be an optimist to believe that you can change something. So, you know, we come from, I mean, it's not about being foolish or silly, but it is really to say that we are seeing what consumers are saying. We are seeing what consumers are buying. So look at the number of specialized health stores that have opened up in every part of this country. So it's not just a Bombay phenomena. You go to Ludhiana, you go to Indoor, you see a lot of these specialist uh, products that are available. So increasingly, 
um, you know, people are moving towards a better lifestyle and therefore better eating. How is this actually panning out and showing up on, uh, you know, in terms of cost pressures for you? Or rather, if you look at it as an investment phase, mm -hmm. how long will this be an investment phase until you start actually looking at some serious profitability from this vertical? Because right now, it's too soon to tell. This is profitable for us. It's part of our entire portfolio and this is the profitable, it is profitable in as part of our entire portfolio. If you look at it in terms of percentage growth, obviously this is of a lower base. Mm. The growth that we are seeing in this category is far higher than the growth we are seeing either in the total market or in what you've just called indulgent products. But again, we've got to remember that this is a small base. Yeah. I think the second thing we've got to remember is we're not talking about double-digit uh, numbers. When, I, when I'm talking about Sushi Choice as a brand, I'm talking about crores and three digits, with, you know, uh, as a prefix to those crores. So this is, a, this is a sizable business. You know, this business on a standalone could actually be the size of several food companies that we have in India. On another note, uh, you know, uh, with Oreo coming in, are you a bit perturbed that, you know, you're losing market share? We're not losing market share, so that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is, it's not just Oreo. There are, if I were to look at Nielsen, Nielsen tracks 433 brands in biscuits. So, it is actually a very vibrant market and has been so for a long time. I do believe then that when uh, brands like Oreo enter the market, they actually do a lot more good because they invest in the market, they expand the category, and um, I think if you've been in the market and you've got a one-third share of the market, with that extra investment going into the market <coughs> and that expansion, it helps everybody. Thank you very much, Kanita. Truly a Great. pleasure once again seeing you. Wonderful. Thanks. Time for a short breather here on Brand Equity, but you stay with us. It's coming up is Wall Fallen's Managing Director, Charles Wright giving you a complete lowdown on brand makeovers.